Hello and welcome. So I was working on some code for an upcoming video which sorts the bytes in the screen buffer using the insertion sort algorithm. As always, I wrote some bugs and I had to deal with them. And this time I encountered something a little unusual. Usually when I'm coding an assembly language, if I screw something up, it's very obvious, like it will hang or it will crash. But this time the symptom was a little odd in that it seemed to almost work. Like everything looked, in fact, if I didn't look very closely, I would have thought it was working. Um, so I thought that would be interesting to share with you guys. So in this video, I'm going to show you what the bug looks like. I'll give you a glimpse of the code so you can see if you can spot the bug for yourself. And then we'll use the debugger and see how that can help clarify what's going on. Before you continue, I strongly recommend you brush up on insertion sort. And I have posted a video called Visualizing Insertion Sort to help you with that. Uh, I recommend you just give that a look. Just pause this video right now. Who can keep these things straight in their head? Insertion sort, selection sort, merge sort. I only know them because I've just been studying them for this little project that I'm working on. So just go and watch that video. I promise I won't do anything interesting until you get back. I'm just going to show the intro. So let's run it and you can see the bug in action. So here we are with random garbage and it's going to go ahead and run insertion sort on the whole thing. And let's see what we end up with. First of all, it's pretty cool, right? I mean, it's pretty cool even if there's a bug, it's pretty cool to watch. All right, so I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, hey, this is, it worked. Everything looks pretty much in order. And then my eyes can't help but fall on to here. And I'm like, wait a minute. How is it possible that we end up with semigraphic characters sandwiched between alphanumeric characters like that? That can't possibly be in order, right? Like these, these must belong somewhere down here. So I run it again. Maybe I can catch something when I watch it in action. Maybe there's something that I can see if I look really closely. Three, two, one, go! All right, who am I kidding? I mean, it looks like this was there from very early on because I kind of saw it sliding, sliding, sliding down. But uh, it's hard to see. So the first thing I did was to slow things down by forcing keyboard input before it would do anything. So this is the code. There's not much there. And I just put a delay waiting for a keystroke right up here in the outer loop. So the first thing I would expect to see is for this to try to sort itself in place. And it should already be in place. So I'm thinking when I hit the key, these two characters will just remain put. And sure enough, they are. The next thing I would expect is that P should shift to the left a couple times. Mm, nothing happened. Oh, oh, oh. okay. Uh, hmm. So all of a sudden, an orange appeared out of nowhere, and the question mark moved. If I continue forward question mark move forward and another orange appeared. Where are these oranges coming from? Now something changed here. It didn't look like a real shift. Now if I keep going, these are shifting, but the characters up here don't seem to be coming here. In fact, it almost seems like this is being filled with completely different characters. But mostly in order, like this does seem in order. Uh, what could possibly be causing this? 
So it was about here that I kind of had it and I said I need to make myself some breakfast and so I just made myself some breakfast and then while I was away and I was thinking about what could possibly have caused this, it finally occurred to me. It finally occurred to me what it was. Uh, but if I had used a debugger, I think it would have occurred to me very easily as well. So I'm going to walk you through the code. Let's see if you could figure out what I screwed up. So this is some Java code that basically I just transcoded into assembly. I just like followed this pretty closely. Um, so we have the outer loop where I represents the item we're going to start shifting to the left. And an inner loop where J represents the position that item is in at each point. So the, the inner loop shifts left one at a time, one at a time, while the outer loop decides which element we're moving on to shift. You'll notice the outer loop starts at element one and arrays start counting at zero and that's because the zeroth element has nowhere left to shift. The zeroth element is already sorted with respect to itself. So we always start at the second element and we make sure that it's sorted relative to it and everything to its left. So the inner loop starts at the element we're going to start shifting and it swaps, it shifts, so long as there is somewhere to shift it to and it is smaller than its left neighbor. Remember, you want the left neighbor to be smaller than it for it to be sorted. So if the, the left neighbor is bigger than it, then we need to shift that jth element to the left. And that's all this does. This is just a simple swap. We remember what's at item J. We clobber what's at item J with what is uh, to its left. And then we can fill what was to its left with that saved element which came from J. And there is nothing wrong with this Java code, so the bug is not here. This Java code is just fine. Problem is somehow with how I transcoded it. So let's just take a quick look, maybe not so quick look at the code. So I have set up the VDG so that it will set the text buffer to start at E100, and then I point it at E100. So that's where all of my elements are. That way, that's how you get to see everything shifting in real time. So we start at the element right after the zeroth one. And this is what I added to just wait for the keystroke. We keep on going as long as we are not higher than or the same as this. So this is like one past the end of the buffer. And if we are at or uh, higher than that, then we is done. I insertion sort done. We come down here and we return. So this is sort of the outer loop. This sets up you to start where X is. So you can think of X as I, and you can think of U as J. So we start U off being X, or we start J off being I. And we get ready to shift U to the left as far as we need to. Now there were two conditions in that inner for loop. One of them is to make sure that J is bigger than zero. And the other one is to check whether the left neighbor is bigger than what is sitting at J. And that's what this stuff is doing here. So this is doing the zero check. And if that fails, then we're out. And this is doing the left neighbor check. And if that fails, we're out. And then finally, we do the swap. So B will be the left neighbor. A is already the item we're looking at. And so we just swap their places, and then we branch back up. No, I'm sorry, we uh, decrement U, which is J, and then we branch back up. So go ahead, pause. If you need to pause, see if you could see what I screwed up here. Let's take a look at MAME. Let's see what the debugger has to say about what's going on. So we're now at the beginning of the insertion sort subroutine. We're sitting right here. So the next thing we're going to do is to wait for a keystroke. So I'm going to do that. I will give it the keystroke that it so sorely desires. And now we're here. We're asking if X has reached the end. 
And if you take a look, X is where we would expect it is at the second item, it is at E01. And we're not at the end, so we fill U with what X is. U is now E01. And now we're about to enter the inner loop. So has U shifted all the way to the left yet? Surely not. And so we go ahead and we figure out what's sitting at U. And we compare that with the left neighbor of U. So we can just double check here. A is 90. And 90 is the, that's good. And we're comparing. And we decide if we need to shift them. We do not need to shift them. So we have skipped over to here which means we are done with the inner loop. So we will advance X to the next item. So now X will become EO2. We go back up to the top. We wait for a keystroke. We ask if X is done. Do, do, do. We move X into U. U is now E02. Uh, go for a little bit here, do a little bit of shifting, move U to the left, U is now E01. Do a little shifting, U is now E100. Anyone getting nervous? U is now DFF. Wait a minute. What? How? What? What's going on? Why? Why hasn't you stopped? You should stop when we're at the zeroth element of the buffer. The buffer starts at E hundred. Why didn't you stop? Surely you see it by now. Or maybe you are dumbfounded as I was. What? How far is you gonna go? And I say, wait a minute. I make sure the loop is done so long as U hasn't hit zero. But guys, that's the index of the array, not the address where U needs to go to. U needs to go all the way up to E100 and not beyond. But it was going all the way to the beginning of memory. Oh, and yet it was still so fast. That was pretty interesting, wasn't it? I mean, you saw it when it was working. It was pretty fast. So the fix is this. Let's watch that work. All right, now, slowly shifting. And now it looks like there's no weird orange things happening. Only the stuff that we've got are shifting into place. All right, let's watch that at full speed. Ah, oh, smooth as butter.